following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Watch the truth about Mother Goose. Turn these pages and you'll see her nursery rhymes from olden times are really part of history. We'll get the truth, the facts for sooth. Solve this age-old mystery. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, What a good boy am I. The world is a carousel of color Wonderful, wonderful color Walt Disney presents you by RCA, world leader in color television, makers of stereo and tape recorders for the home, and computers for industry. RCA, eyes and ears for America's space program. Come into the space age with RCA, the most trusted name in electronics. Want to know something? Ask RCA computers. Want to know about launching a Saturn rocket? RCA computers make the final systems check. In our space program, you'll find RCA computers at work. Want to know about safeguarding America? RCA's computers are used in the communication system that alerts major U.S. bases in North America. In defense, you'll find RCA computers at work. Want to know about electronic typesetting? RCA's Spectra 70 computer helps compose a newspaper page in two minutes. In printing, you'll find RCA computers at work. Want to know something about today's space age communications? RCA computers can provide the answers. RCA, the most trusted name in electronics. From Walt Disney's wonderful world of color, we bring you the truth about Mother Goose. And now your host, Walt Disney. As we promised you last week, this program is going to be an expose. Hard-hitting, factual, no holes barred, no punches pulled. Seems to be a current fad prying into the lives of famous people, both past and present. So we decided to dig up a little dirt ourselves. We're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about old Mother Goose. And who's better suited to give the lowdown on the sweet old lady than our super duper snooper, that world famous know-it-all, Professor Ludwig Sherlock. Von Drake. All right. Now, before I look you square in my eyes and tell you the truth about Mother Goose, you should know who Mother Goose really was. Now, the encyclopedia tells you that Mother Goose was an old lady from Boston named Elizabeth Burgoose, and that she used to make up the stories to tell her grandchildren. Well, don't you believe it, because Mother Goose was my grandma. And here is a portrait to prove it. This is me on my grandmother Goose's knee when I was a little duckling. And up here is my childhood companion and friend, Herman, when he was just a little bug. And anyway, here now is Herman to prove to you that Mother Goose really was my grandmother. <coughs> Herman, who is Mother Goose? She's my grandmother. That's right. She is your grand... Ooh, ish. How many times must I tell you she is my grandmother? That's what I said. She's my grandmother. Oh, Herman! Do you kooky bug you? Well, anyway, here is the truth. Did you know that many of her rhymes and jingles is about real people? 
and they are based on actual facts and happenings? That's right. Like Little Bo Peep was first a game of hide and seek before it became the nursery rhyme. Right. Jingles like one to buckle up my shoe was used to teach kids how to count. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, close the door. And some jingles was used to teach the kids the alphabet. Yes, and their ABGs, too. You've all heard of Peter Piper Peck the Picker Peckle, Picker Peck a Picker Pop. Well, anyway, that thing I did up there about the Peter Piper Peck the you know what I mean, anyway. Drama students have always used this particular song twist of a vocal exercise. And I, I use it all the time. That's the reason that my speech is so immaculate and my pronunciate is so good. <laughs> oh, Herman, I'm glad you brought that up. Because Peter Piper, if recited twice in a row without a breath, it's also a surefire way to get rid of the hiccup. Watch. Peter Piper picks a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picks. If Peter Piper picks a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picks? See? It works. <laughs> All righty now. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. A Jack be nimble originated out of a sport called candle leaping. He who could jump the candle without putting it out, good luck would come to him. And this is how it works. Now first, I make the wish. I wish. Okay. Right. Then somebody recites Jack be nimble. Jack be nimble. Jack be quick. Jack, jump over the candle. Uh oh, I put the candle out. Now my wish will not come true. <laughs> Something's burning. Somebody must be barbecuing. Hmm. Ooh, that smells so good. Rose duck. That's my favorite dish, rose duck. Rose duck! No! Well, I sure messed that tail up. Ooh. Well, here's another tale, and I don't want to spoil it. So I will let this one tell itself. What's the truth about Mother Goose? Let's clear up all the mystery. Her nursery rhymes from olden times are really part of history. What's the truth about Mother Goose? Turn these pages and you'll see. We'll get the truth, the facts for sooth. Solve this age-old mystery. Jack Horner sat in a corner eating his Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, What a good boy am I. According to the facts, the history of this little rhyme goes back to 16th century London. Jack Horner was the servant of a city official on his way to deliver a Christmas present to King Henry VIII. In those days, it was a custom when bringing presents to the king to stick them inside a pie. And these presents, as Jack Horner knew, were usually something of great value. And since Jack was a bit of a knave, he stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum, which happened to be the deed to a valuable estate. sent for a city official, he made a beeline to court expecting some special favor in return for his wonderful present. And King Henry let him have it. <laughs> and as for Jack Horner, he moved in on his stolen estate where he lived happily ever after. Unless, of course, he was haunted by a certain nursery rhyme that became popular at that time. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner in a Christmas pie. Put in his thumb, pulled out a 
of them said, what a good boy am I. Jack Horner, Jack Horner, Jack Horner. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? Pretty maids all in a row. The Mary in this old rhyme was Mary Stuart, Queen of Scotland, who came from France to take over the throne of Scotland, bringing with her the gay French ways, extravagant tastes, and a love of frivolity. Such going-ons was frowned upon by the dour Scots, who believed in preserving the stern dignity of the court. And so, Mary was considered quite contrary. The silver bells referred to the decoration on her dresses, and her love of exotic food such as cockles account for the cockle shell. And the pretty maids all in a row was her ladies in waiting. But behind this playful little rhyme lies one of the most sinister and tragic stories in all history. Four years after her arrival in Scotland, she married Lord Darnley, a selfish weakling whom Mary soon came to despise. And the beautiful queen turned her attentions to a French poet who lost his head completely when the dour Scots interfered. Then followed a romance with the court musician, but this too ended on a tragic note. When the anger Darnley interfered, came the Earl of Bothwell. And the end of Lord Darnley. And three weeks later, Mary and Bothwell was married. Now Mary was much too much contrary. So the outraged Scots rose up against her, forced her abdication, and slapped her into the island prison of Loch Leven. After a few months, Mary's irresistible charm so captivated the jailer's son that he risked his neck to help her escape. But then, in a try to get back the throne, Mary got up a pretty good-sized army that lost after a big battle. Oh, dear. Then she ran all the way to England to hide with her cousin, Queen Elizabeth. But Liz became jealous of Mary because she was so popular, this girl. This dazzling cutie became the darling of the court and a rival for the crown. So Liz figured she just gotta go. Though Mary was warned of the danger, she was still contrary and went her merry way. And this was her big mistake. Because she was accused and condemned as a traitor to the government. But Mary refused to plead for mercy and stayed quite contrary to the end. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. Across the face of America, an army of men and machines is turning a dream into reality. Man is going to the moon. And RCA will be there. Out in space, where the repairman never comes, RCA answers the call for high reliability with the help of a remarkable device, the integrated circuit. It does more than ordinary circuits, does it faster, with greater reliability, yet is only one three hundredth of a cubic inch in size. Specially designed integrated circuits are the heart of RCA's new Spectra 70 computer series for business. That's why it's so reliable, so low in cost, and why it outperforms all other computers in its class. Come into the space age with RCA, the most trusted name in electronics.
London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. You remember when you used to play London Bridges? No, 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 not bridges, the kind you wear bridges. I mean real bridges that you drive over. London Bridges. Well, here is the truth about this jingle. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. The history behind this famous nursery song is the story of old London Bridge. A story which begins in 1176 when it was decided to build a permanent bridge of stone to unite North and South London. bridge was finished in 1209, it was sanctified by the addition of a beautiful two-story chapel over the middle pier. And rows of nicely designed houses was built all along the bridge, making the plain Gothic structure into a thing of such beauty that it was acclaimed one of the wonders of the world. Street floors was rented to merchants who did a big business, drawing their customers from the tide of traffic that was coming and going over the bridge. The upper stories of the bridge houses was nicely furnished apartments with bay windows and rooftop balconies where residents with bay windows could enjoy the fresh air and get a good look at the spectacular view. No wonder that Hans Holbein and William Hogarth and other famous painters chose to live on London Bridge. tournament was held on the bridge and people were crowded all over the place to watch two knights prove their courage in glorious combat. scene of spectacular displays and lavish celebrations which marked great moments in English history. While living on London Bridge was both grand and glamorous, there was times when it was equally hazardous. Now and then a cargo ship would break away from its moorings and a bow sprit would come spritzing through a window. The biggest danger to the bridge and the people on it was fire. In 1666, a fire started in a King's Bakery in Pudding Lane, which was later named Charcoal Street. At first, they didn't think much about it. And then suddenly a strong east wind spread the fire beyond control and it swept across the city and onto the bridge. was the 
the famous Great Fire of London that reduced the world's largest city to a big pile of ashes and left London Bridge a bare, blackened mess. While London was being rebuilt, so was the bridge houses, and the tide of people returned. But as the centuries passed, London Bridge began to feel its age. A lot of water had passed under the old bridge, undermining its foundation. The heat of the fires had dangerously weakened its arches, fallen arches, and heavy timbers braced the tottering houses. Violent tremors ran throughout the whole structure. The once magnificent bridge, which had been the pride of London and proclaimed as one of the wonders of the world, was declared a public nuisance and was ridiculed in rhyme and in song. Falling down, falling down, falling down, falling down. Finally, on July 4th, 1823, the death warrant of the old bridge was signed and it was demolished. And a new bridge was built in its place. The London Bridge, which stands today. But the original London Bridge still lives on in the famous old nursery song. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Shake and quake, oh London Bridge. Have a ball till your arches fall. Jump and jive, oh London Bridge, my fair lady. And that's the truth about Mother Goose. The whole truth? The absolute historical truth? Well, as far as we know, that's the truth about Mother Goose. Now you saw the mystery. That's all we know. That's all the show. We'll close our book of history. Want to know something? Ask RCA. Want to know when a hurricane's coming? RCA built weather satellites photograph hurricanes as they form. In weather research, you'll find RCA. Want to know about educational TV? RCA's closed-circuit television lets a single teacher instruct many classes simultaneously. In education, you'll find RCA. Want to know about railway freight? RCA Spectra 70 computers keep track of a railroad's freight cars no matter where they are. In transportation, you'll find RCA. Want to know something about modern advances in printing? Color television? The latest recordings? Ask the leader in the field of space age communications. RCA, the most trusted name in electronics. Now, fairy tales are not like Mother Goose Roy, that are based on facts and real people. Fairy tales are fantasy. They are fun to read. I read them myself every night. But nobody really believes them. I believe them. <laughs> oh, Herman. <laughs> He's so funny. Big joke. Ooh. Anyway, fairy tales are full of imaginary characters who are loaded with magical powers, like Cinderella's fairy godmother. Now, she could change a pumpkin into a coach, or mice into horses, and anything else into anything else. I believe it. <coughs> then there's Pinocchio's good fairy. With a wave of a stick, she changed him from a wooden puppet into a genuine, real live boy. It. 
And then there are bad fairies, like the one in Sleeping Beauty, who turned herself into a fire-breeding dragon. I believe it. Then you're always sure to find a wicked queen like the one in Snow White. She drank some of her own black magic and turned herself into uh, an awful mess. <laughs> oh, boy, is that hard to swallow. But I believe it anyway. Herman, I could smash you. I believe it. Ooh, ish. In fairy tales, you will find all kinds of giants. There are small giants and the big economy-sized giants, like the one in Jack and the Beanstalk. That's a real big giant. It's really an old fairy tale, Jack and the Beanstalk, you know. African Zulus used to tell it, American Indians told it, and everybody practically who told this tale gave it different characters. But no matter who told it, it was always the same story, and they all used the same magic beans. And this beans is the same ones I am going to imagine in the story I am going to dream up. Once upon a long time ago, there was a place called Happy Valley. And it was called Happy Valley because everyone there was very happy. <laughs> this place was really beautiful. And the people lived happily ever after, except little Herman here. Herman! Herman, what's all the sniffling is going on with you? <laughs> I liked Willie, and he got killed dead. Oh, isn't he cute? Herman, bless your little heart. Herman, there never was the Willie at all. No? No, of course not. Like all fairy tale characters, Willie is just a banana num. A banana. He's made up in your subconscious mind. Yeah? Yes. In other words, just a figment of your imagination. No. Has anybody seen anything of a teensy, weensy little mouse? What do you mean a little mouse? Would you put the roof back on the house and go away? I'm talking to my fr fr I'm to I no. I wee 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 is a wee wee. What's the matter with him? Something he ate? No, really. It's a figure. It's a figmentation of his imagination. Well, now that the professor has given us the real stories behind the stories, and you know the truth about Mother Goose, how would you like to know the truth about our next show? If so, you stay right there, and in just a minute, we'll give you the real story about that story. Where are you going, my little one, little one? Where are you going, my baby, my own? Turn around, and you Turn around and you're four. 
petticoats. Where have you gone? Turn around and you're tiny. Turn around and you're grown. Turn around and you're a young wife with babes of your own. Turn around, turn around, turn around, and you're a young wife with babes of your own. One little girl, one precious childhood, saved for years to come in pictures. You can do it, too. All it takes is a camera, Kodak film, and thoughtfulness. Without warning, a sudden twist of fate creates an unusual drama between a stubborn man, a hilarious hound, and one of nature's noblest and cleverest creatures, the silver fox. <laughs> is a special kind of silver fox, worth a lot of money, quick, clever, and cunning enough to outmaneuver any man until Sam Davenport comes along. What begins as a high-spirited rump becomes a unique clash with Sam vowing to be the one to outfox the fox. But Domino has some ideas of his own about Sam's perpetual game of hide and seek. When he's not matching mental muscles with good old Sam or eluding a hungry bobcat, Domino takes time for some hunting of his own. Well, even a hero can have an off day. There's even time for courting a vivacious vixen, living it up to a swinging backwoods foxtrot. as Domino leads a merry chase to surprises and heartwarming adventure next week in the fascinating story of The Silver Fox and Sam Davenport on Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. that rivals the concert hall. RCA Victor Solid State Stereo. This new RCA Victor Stereo has a Duralife diamond stylus in a floating cartridge, protects your records through hundreds of planes, brings you superb stereo reproduction through the matchless eight-speaker full-range sound system. RCA Victor Solid State Stereo for realism that rivals the concert hall. RCA, the most trusted name in electronics. Walt Disney's wonderful world of color has been brought to you by RCA, world leader in color television. Makers of stereo and tape recorders for the home and computers for industry. RCA, eyes and ears for America's space program. Come into the space age with RCA, the most trusted name in electronics. He just happens to look like an ordinary guy. Wait a minute. If I got responsibilities, believe me, you got worse. All the guys depend on you. He's the man with a thousand sons. And in their eyes, he's a hero. A warmly human hero in an extraordinary motion picture. See Fred McMurray, Vera Miles, and Kurt Russell in Walt Disney's Follow Me Boys.